I'm a junior funded trader from with Axia, and I'm going to be taking you over some some execution of a senior trader named Joe. Um, he had a few video series out before. I've been working quite closely with him recently. I sit next to him on, on one of our floors here in Axia, and I'm going to run you over a comment trade, a trade that came out. Um, uh, a risk on move that was caused by a Lavrov comment and Joe is a very technical trader so I'm going to run you over how he preps for the day, his technical landscape and um, just that solid technical foundation which allowed him to access these two trades, one in Bund and one in S&P off of the back of the Lavrov comment. So let's go. So looking at Bund and S&P, the comment came out on Wednesday the 20th. Um, first, we'll be looking at the technical alignment, the catalyst, which was the comments, um, how we managed this trade um, on the ladders. We won't spend too much time looking at the ladders because this trader he leans very much on his technicals. He looks from a larger time frame right down to the lower time frame. Um, and the ladder is really the last thing that he looks at to access his trades. Um, and then we'll look at the aftermath um, and the second opportunity that came in on the S&P. Um, we won't spend too much time on that ladder recording and then just some key takeaways. So let's get started. The, the comment was um, due to long, long range missiles being developed in, in uh, being shipped to the Ukraine, sorry. Um, and so if we start with just taking a look at the technical landscape on the Bund leading into this. So what you have here, um, so this is the day the comment came out. And so the prior day, what you had is some, some risk off flow towards the end of the session in the Bund. Um, and so the Bund sold off um, and came back up, closed within value and left this large spike lower. Um, and so the morning coming into this Lavrov comment, it was really important to see where and how the Bund had opened. It failed to form any meaningful test into that spike lower in the evening. And just before the comment comes out, we've now so this is the risk off flow that we that happened the day before on um, a Gazprom comment. And you can see we, we opened, failed to kind of form any meaningful volume or, or build any value in the spike low. We'd come up and now the Bund is trading kind of on top of that. It's formed a little range on top of that comment that came out the prior day. So you can see it's building value it's, you know, VPOC has been has shifted up and we've kind of formed a bit of a ledge here. You can kind of see it better here, um, leading into the comment. Um, and, and you can see there's a big vacuum here left from, you know, from this move down that has been coming, you know, a few times. We've, we've, got, we've got this really nice, um, really nice spike higher on, on, a, on a couple of the profiles, you know, coming into the, coming into the comment. So let's look at it on from a candlestick chart. Oh. So this is a five minute on the weekly, and you can see you have this nice trend line as well. Um, here's the little uh, volume build up, up above the, the gas prom risk off the prior day before, uh, leading into the comment. And this is just a closer look at the five minute. Um, this is kind of after the trade has happened. This is the move that we're going to be looking at. This is that risk off I was telling you about. And this is the volume block that builds kind of on top of that Gazprom comment that came out. Um, and you can see it's got these series of really poor lows um, and just really stale positioning going into, going into this comment that comes out. So this is what Joe will be looking at on, you know, in this morning when he comes in, when he's prepping, when he's looking at markets. Um, he's looking, he's observing where is value being built relative to the comments that came out, you know, the prior day, the prior week, what is important, what is in play. Um, and then just, just for a closer picture, this is on a one minute. So you see all this stale positioning being built here, leading into the comment. Um, and so when this trader took the trade, when Joe took this trade, he knew that we had that vacuum that could be filled. So if you go back, you, could, you have this vacuum trade that's possible up to, the, up to the opening price from the day before. But this stale positioning was really bad and, and you know, you'd really think it would be traded out if the comment hadn't come out. So here, here's that stale positioning. And so when Joe takes his trade, he's aware of all the stale positioning and the, and the ability for the market to kind of clean that before, before really extending higher. So let's take a look at the ladder recording. OK, so for reference, we have his S&P ladder here, which we will come to a bit later on. 
his bun ladder here and the euro here. And in this trade, Joe really leans on what the euro is doing and what equities are doing. So you can see the comments just come out, volatility has entered the markets, and Joe straight away, he's 20, 20 lots long bund. So we'll just observe this for a while. You can see the euro here. So the comments come out, the bund hasn't really moved too much. We've kind of stayed there. He knows his, his, his ticks and that vacuum is, is you know, right up to the 52 30s. So he's targeting the 30s, he's now up to 100 lots as the euro is ticking down. You know, you have euro stocks here taking a bit lower as well, S&P towards the lows. So he's really thinking in this moment about how to manage the position, leaning on all the correlations you can see across the markets. So we'll just observe this for a little bit longer. He's now up to 250 lots. I know when the market doesn't really gain any traction because he's looking for a momentum trade, the comments come out, he's looking to fill the vacuum. It should be a very fast trade. When it's not immediately going and he's aware of that stale positioning, he cuts back on his size straight away. So you see he's gone from 250 down, straight down to 140. We'll just keep looking at this for a while. You can see the euro is ticking lower, S&P now right at the lows. He's not afraid to add back on. He's back to his original size. Here you have euro making new lows. It's really keeping him in his position, giving him the confidence that the bun should really go. Euro at the lows, <clears throat> equity still holding the lows. As he gets a bit of a pullback now on the bund, he's willing to stay in this position. He has this low volume node here, that's a protection. He has all the correlations still in play. You can see Bund is now building a bit of a volume block a little bit higher up. A little two-way trading happening here. Still has that low volume node that's been untested. And here you can see Euro is really pinned to the lows and the equities are making new lows. Even though the Bund hasn't been you know, consistently bidding, he's, he's, he's happy to stay in his position. He's happy to stay with a large size, leaning on all those other correlations. So we'll just speed this up a bit. We can see now the Bund is getting a, getting a bit more traction. This has held a higher volume node here. And it's really pushing up to his, his target price of 52.30. Scaling out of some of his size. So 
So we'll just fast forward it a few seconds. So you can see he's held on to a significant amount of his core position. There, it touches his price. He's now down. He scaled out of most of his size as it's hit his, you know, his target of 30s. And he's just waiting to see if the market has any more energy in it and if he can get away with you know, taking a little bit more from the market. Um, we pull back. He's aware that because we're in a vacuum, because we're in a vacuum zone, the market and Bund might just trade in between those two higher volume nodes and just fill in that vacuum. So he doesn't want to be in this position for too long. He knows that his, his conviction ticks are really up to 30. Um, and so once the market doesn't really push beyond there, he's happy to kind of get out of his position entirely. So that was his bun trade um, on the Lavrov comment coming out on the risk on flows. And as those flows kind of begin to dissipate, um, the trader or Joe now looks towards trading another market, which is the S&P. And so S&P, the technical backdrop is a little bit more complicated. Well, anyway, so this is the Bund, and just, and just to quickly debrief the Bund. Um, this is the TPO that came out when the Lavrov comment hit, and it really goes straight up to hit. Well, it extends a little bit further beyond the 30s, but you can see a nice, vac nice vacuum trade as it goes up. And then as it happens, the market does spend time filling in the vacuum um, before you know, trading lower on the day. So here we go. This is the S&P trade. And like I mentioned before, it was really important for Joe to, you know, he, he trades markets that he's really technically aligned with, which he understands what's happening, he understands what's going on, um, and that he feels comfortable to be involved in. So just on a wider time frame and just a much bigger picture, um, we'll be looking at the S&P and how he executes the S&P off the back of the Lavrov comments of flows dissipating and the, the kind of the risk on move now losing momentum and it's, stop, you know, it's starting to not play out anymore and how Joe uses the S&P um, and the way it's been building volume as, as a magnet it's to, to take kind of back up. Um, so S&P is sitting in a, you know, in a tight range. We've, we've just come, come off from, um, from FOMC and CPI. We, can, we will look at that on a, on a large time frame candlestick chart in a bit. Um, but it's important to note that this is the day the lab of comment came out and this is what the S&P looked like um, leading into that comment. So you had you know, the poor lows, um, a very prominent VPOC at the highs. But it's important to look at how the week started. Um, so we, we've had all this positioning. Um, Monday we've come in, we've opened, we've been trading, we've you know, put value higher. And in the afternoon we have some Apple news that comes out and we get some risk off flows that come into the S&P. So the S&P spikes down. Um, it leaves a very nice spike. And we close much lower out of value on the day. And then Tuesday, we have this large trend day where S&P built value at the lows of that spike price. We never really tested it at all. The market just, the overnight session, just built value here, didn't, you know, didn't test this at all. And then you know, we get an early set of single prints, and the market just extends. And this was the, you know, this was the first meaningful extension outside of this large um, kind of balance that S&P had been in for a, for a long while. So the close here is significant. You know, the way we've put value is very significant. Um, and the disregard for this Apple News is also very significant, leading into, in, into this level of common. So here we are on, on the 30 minute time frame. Um, you have you know, this is the CPI figure that came out and, and you know, we kind of chopped around this balance for, for a very long time. And so that trend day was really the first meaningful break out of that balance. And you know, we closed right at the highs with, with those four highs. And so it was a really bullish sign that you know, we've now left this balance. We've closed out of the balance. We built value out of balance. Um, and now this is where we're sitting leading into the Labrov comment. So this is on a smaller time frame. Um, this is the Lavrov comment that comes out. And you can just draw a line here. Um, the prior days close uh, you know, out of this range that we'd been looking at. Um, very bullish close. And you know, the following day, on, before leading up to the Lavrov comment, the market continues to trade at the highs. Um, you know, it, do it doesn't drop back into the range. 
and it builds overnight value on you know above this range, um, really confirming that you know the SP had now broken out of this much larger balance. And then so when the Lavrov comment comes out, it's the first real meaningful test that the SP has back inside that balance. And so Joe's looking at this and thinking, you know, if this market is really bullish, which you know his technical landscape is showing him that it is, then you know, this overnight balance that we've had. Um, could, could be a really strong magnet for the S&P to kind of, you know, jump back up. Um, so we'll take a look at how he traded this. And then this is just on a one-minute time frame. You know, the lab reform comes out. And as the market makes new lows, as the correlations, the correlations are so key for this trade because the, all the correlations start to dissipate. The button pulls back. The euro, you know, comes back up. And... Um, and, and the S&P just makes a new low. So Joe, Joe you know, takes a long trade, looking to trade back into the balance. Um, not looking to trade back into the balance per se, but using the balance as a bit of a magnet for the S&P to you know, come back up to. So we're not going to take too... Uh, we're not going to look at the ladders for too long because the, you know, Joe's in this trade for quite a while. He kind of gets out when he knows it's not going to make a new high. Um, and it was just more of a short-term trade looking to looking for that balance to be used as a magnet. So let's take a look at the video. Yeah, so here we are. So S&P, Euro stocks, still at the lows. Burned, you know, we've broken above the 30s and now we're kind of pulling back a bit. And here, Euro is still at the lows. The markets now have, you know, lost the volatility that they had when the comment had first come out. Um, everything is not moving as fast and the momentum has kind of dissipated a bit. Um, so you'll see Joe, he'll be executing on the, on the S&P ladder and he'll just be accumulating longs, knowing that the momentum has dried out and, you know, the market has had the time to digest that Lavrov comment and you're not really going to get a huge flush out lower anymore. The comment's been out for a while now. So let's take a look at how he executes. So S&P there, still making new lows. Euros kind of pulled back a bit, and Joe gets long 20 lots S&P, right towards the lows. You can see the markets are much slower now than they were earlier when we were taking a look at the ladder recordings. Euro quite, quite a bit off the, off, off the lows as the fund now is trading below his 30s. So it's just the S&P and the Euro stocks which are really at their lows. S&P is still making new lows. He's 40 lots long. There we are, he's adding to his position as the Bund has come off quite a significant amount from the highs. It started to establish a bit of a value within that vacuum. Um, Euro is still chopping around a bit. It's come off a fair bit, but it's chopping around towards the lows. You know, it really is the Bund here that's come off the most from its initial move. So he's leaning on the idea that these flows have kind of dissipated and they're no longer there. And so he's using the S&P and that overnight session as a magnet to pull him back outside of that large balance block that we've been trading in for, you know, for a number of weeks. So yeah, the S&P slowly ticks up. Like I said, this is a much longer trade. He's in this trade for probably about half an hour before getting out of it. Um, it's not a momentum trade like the Bund trade earlier. It's more of a passive trade looking for, you know, like I say, that, that magnet from the overnight session that built value higher to kind of just direct the S&P back up once the flows have kind of died out and the market's digested that comment. Euro now trading quite a bit higher. Um, he's not happily on side yet on the S&P, so he's you know, very wary that this position might come back down to him, but he was happy to hold it offside. Um, and, and you'll just see now the S&P will just slowly tick up um, for a very long period of time, and, then, and you know, he'll start scaling out of some. 
the bun now trading, you know, quite a bit lower. So yeah, we won't we won't spend too long on this video. Um, I can fast forward it to show you guys where he is in a few minutes' time. You know, the euro now has pulled back quite a significant amount, and he's now comfortably on side in the S and P. But yeah, you can see this is a really long trade that plays out over quite a bit of time. So we can see that here. Um, that was the trend day before. This was the overnight balance that we built, those poor lows. The lever of comment, you know, took the market lower. Um, we chopped, you know, a bit lower a few more times. And as, as Joe gets long, looking to take it back into that overnight balance or, or using that overnight balance as a bit of a magnet and all that value that we built up here. Um, having, you know, this is the first real meaningful test into that large balance before, you know, coming back up later in the session. And so if we had to take some key takeaways from this, um, something I've been working on a lot recently with Joe is being very technically aligned with the market before you know, trading any news, before looking for any setups, is just having a really sound awareness and understanding of your markets and then kind of allowing the setups and plays come to you. And so when this Lavrov comment came out, because Joe was very technically aligned with what the Bund was doing and what the S&P was doing, um, he, you know, he managed to execute two really great trades, one using the momentum of the risk off flows and the other one, you know, just once all the flows had dried out using, using that dissipating flow momentum and, you know, the, dry, the, 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 the breakdown in correlations to access an S&P trade. Um, so, yeah, so I put the strategic understanding of your larger time frame, which is really important here, um, very important for his S&P trade. And then another t takeaway, which... You know, it's something I think we're all a bit, a bit of fault here. Once, once the news has come out, the Lavrov comment has come out, you've just seen all this risk on flows. If you've maybe not had time to access that or you, you didn't access it for whatever reason, you kind of straight away go into this mentality of, oh, the trade is over, um, and, and, you, and you sit back. Whereas in this situation, Joe, you know, really shows us or teaches us a great example of accessing the trade, the flow, and then also taking another trade off of the flows dissipating and the correlations breaking down. So I think it's really important to continue looking at the market and being aware that once correlations break down, there might still be a second opportunity. So, so that's all of it. Thank you, guys.